Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with the Monty. Visiting family in Sacramento this week, and on the way there, I fished the Chucky for Wilderness with the Monty on Patreon. Got that pretty good morning of fishing. And now I'm at the Eagle Falls Trailhead. I'm going to hike into Desolation Wilderness. The original plan was to try to catch the big brookies spawning in the back of Fontanellis Lake. I thought it was the first week of October that I shot a clip of them spawning back there underwater that you can find on my Wildlife Encounter playlist. Well, to my surprise, <laughs> I checked the video before I left uh, yesterday, and that was the middle of September, so I'm two weeks late. And that was two years ago, and I don't know why I thought it was the first week of October, but I'm two weeks late, and I don't know if there's going to be anything up there. I'm going to hike the five miles in anyway and go see if I can catch some that are still back there because that's a really good chance to get a remarkable brookie, and I want to get back there and do it. I just think I missed it, and I don't really have time to plan anything else. So I'm sticking with the plan. I'm just going to hike up there and go see what kind of fish are there. I already have this hike on my hiking and backpacking playlist. If you want to see it, it's the hike to Fontanellis or Dick's Lake. That will show you. It's about five-mile hike, 2,000-foot elevation gain. It's pretty nasty. But I'm going to day hike it today. And I'm going to go see if there's any fish still hanging out in the back of the lake. Next time you see me, I'll probably be at the lake. So I'm going to get hiking right now because it's going to be about 78 degrees today. And I don't want to be hiking over no ridge when it's 78 degrees. So I'm at the inlet. And I miss the fish schooling back here. There's nothing. But in the top couple pools... It's just loaded with nice brookies. So I guess they were able to get up this little bit of water, get in here, and they're not getting out. And maybe they'll be stuck in there until the snow melts in the spring. And this is a raging river and they'll probably all wash right back in. But there's a bunch of them in this pool and the pool up above that I could see. So if I could sneak up, I got about a three and a half, four foot leader, and I got a big pheasant tail bead head on, because I think these fish are gonna be really hungry, because there's a lot of competition in these pools for as many as big fish are in there. There's like 10 in each one, but I'm sure they're super spooky, but I hiked all the way up here. I'm going to fish in the lake with a long leader and probably a woolly bugger because I fished here for Patreon several weeks ago and got a really nice rainbow right here, like a 15, 16 incher. And I didn't even know there were rainbows in here. So we're going to do some methodical fishing in the lake. But first, I just want to... I just hiked like five miles, man. I, I need to catch something and they're, they're right there and I'm gonna catch me a couple fish if I'm able to. So let's see if I can not be clumsy and spook them and hopefully I can catch a couple before I totally spook the pool to the point where nothing's gonna bite. So let's see if we can't get a couple quick ones in and then we're gonna break out the long stuff and we're gonna go for it in the main lake. I mean, yeah, if you go to my Wildlife Encounter playlist and look at my underwater spawning brookie video, they were right there clustered at the bottom and just thick as grass. And I put my GoPro underwater and that was my big Jacques Cousteau underwater excitement video. Simple me doesn't really have much fancy stuff like that as far as videoing stuff. It's really windy as you can see, but I think I can whip it right around this corner and we can get something, so let's give it a shot. There we go. There we go. That didn't take long. So let me get my hand wet. The nice brookies, man. There's 16 inches plus in this lake. I've seen them and I've caught them, so. If you go to my Patreon, you can see I catch a pretty big one. 
Yeah, he got that first one, and now they seem to already be wise to it. These brookies are a little bigger. They're a little wiser, but they're not that wise. Yeah, here's the flashy male. Man, he's fighting. These brookies are good. These are some good brookies. You always want to wet your hands because their slime is like their immune system and when you remove that slime, it opens them up to infection. But look at the beautiful colors on this brookie. He's nice, man. That is a nice brook trout. This is really convenient because I have this rock as my ultimate cover and the fish are back in the deep corner back there, clustered. And they're not really doing anything, they're just sitting back there. So I think they're just killing time at this point. All right, I was just shooting my underwater spawning brookie video and I came back over the top and I saw two big brookies that were probably too big to make it up into the creek. And they're swimming around in this corner. Now, I have a four foot leader on right now because I have it on for that creek. So I don't know if they're even gonna look at this, but I don't got no fancy time to be tying on big leaders and stuff like that. I'm just gonna throw it out there and see if I can get one of these to hit this nymph. If I just let it sink, maybe one will go for it, but they're bigger. So these bigger fish are usually a little wiser. All right, those two big brookies were a little too sophisticated for this two-bit card trick four-foot leader I'm trying to throw at them. <laughs> so let me go uh, tie on something and do things right this time. So I put on about an eight-foot leader, and I'm going to use this big black woolly bugger. I saw those two big brookies swimming around, and they, they look like they're too big to get up here because all the fish in the creek are about the same size. So I'm hoping I have some bigger brookies that are down in the lake that are frustrated that they couldn't get up there and get their spawn going. So hopefully they'll respond to that frustration by lashing out and going for my woolly bugger that looks like nothing in the lake, but they seem to like. But I got a big rainbow here last time, man. It, I didn't even know they were in here. So I'm gonna do a quick retrieve across this front water. There's nothing there. The fish I saw were out deep. I saw a couple swimming around on the bottom. So I'm gonna go out on this rock here and let my stuff sink way down. So I'm just gonna let this thing sink, man. I'm gonna watch my line, see if something hits it on the way down. And I'm using this bigger beadhead woolly bugger because it sinks fast. And it'll get down there really quick. And then once it gets down towards the bottom, I'll just strip it up little strips and see if anything's down there. I might have to go with a, with a nymph and fish slower though, you know? You know, I, I don't know what mood these fish are going to be in. I got nothing in that corner, so I'm just going to throw it away out there and I'm going to let that thing sink down. Cause I'm not seeing a lot up top, but I did see faintly could see some big shadows cruising around the bottom. I got my spinning rod and jigs too. So I'm not, I'm not holding anything back. I'm using whatever I got to use here. Got a pretty good one with a deep sink. He was right on the bottom out there. And he sucked up my woolly bugger. This is around the class I'm looking for back here. Maybe a little bigger than this, but that's a good sized brookie. There we go. It's a good sized brook trout right there. Beautiful spawning colors. Get him back in. It's letting it sink. And the wind's blowing now, so the wind's giving it action. Right now, the woolly bugger has action. So I just gotta watch the end of my line. If it runs and if it hits, they usually hit it pretty good on a woolly bugger. 
It's just really hard to see a strike with this woolly bugger because it sinks the line down so fast. Whereas a nymph, I can kind of control it a little bit better as far as the visibility goes. Man, I saw those two nice brickies swimming around, hanging out, and they're gone, and now there's just nothing. I'm just casting out in the water where I don't see anything. So I'm fishing down deep, hoping to pick something up off cruise in the bottom. Ugh. Fishing a nymph now, and I'm fishing uh, in this shallower stuff over here because this wind is making it tough. And by the time it sinks, it's just too far down. Let's get this guy in the net. Let's take a look at him. It's a beautiful fish. It's just not the bigger ones that I'm hoping to get back here. They're just not here, really. Oh, come on, dude. Get a little recouped in the net. Like, right now, the wind stopped. I should be casting right now. I got to get this fish back in the water and try to get my nymph out there and get it deep. That's a beautiful brookie. That's a nice sized fish, man. Beautiful, beautiful spawning colors. There he goes. All right, I think this wind is telling me to use my spinning rod. <laughs> I'm just having a real hard time out here just seeing the end of my line. I haven't seen a single riser since I've been here. Nothing is rising. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the fly fishing. I think I might try to throw a jig or something for another clip for my spinning rod uh, fishing audience. But uh, I didn't get the big brickie I was looking for. You know, when you get back there and there's a lot of them clustered back here, there's a few big ones in that mix. And they're just not here today. I saw those two that were cruising around in that clear water there, and then they just never came back. And the water is crystal clear. So I could see straight down to the bottom, pretty far out. And I saw one or two that were swimming around down deep, and they might have been the same two that I saw swimming up high. So there's just not a lot of action back at the inlet. It's all up in the creek. And I could probably throw another different kind of fly on and catch all the fish I want up in the creek, but that's no fun. It was more fun filming them underwater, so. Hope you enjoyed this fly fishing at the inlet at Fontanellas. Sorry I was two weeks late and didn't double check on the date. Couldn't bring you the hot action I wanted to, but it was fun and definitely worth the day hike. Thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.